Welcome to a multi-phase model for three-dimensional tumor growth. There are three stages in tumor growth, the avascular stage, the vascular stage, and the metastatic stage. We are interested here in the avascular stage, where we observe an increase in the proliferation rate of the tumor cells and a decrease in their death rate, yielding a clump of tumor cells growing faster than the host cells. There is, however, a limit to this growth because of the balance between nutrient consumption by the tumor cells and the nutrient transport into the clump. Low nutrient level triggers cell death and results in the formation of a necrotic region. In the vascular stage, the tumor develops its own vessels for enhanced blood supply. Once the tumor has achieved this, the tumor cells can escape the primary tumor and metastasize. This is the metastatic stage. The physical model of the avascular tumor is composed of the extracellular matrix as a solid phase, the tumor and host cell populations as adhesive liquid phases, and the interstitial fluid phase, which transports the nutrient of interest. The model equations are obtained via the thermodynamically constrained averaging theory, which starts from a microscopic description with reference to a representative elementary volume which must contain all phases. It must be large enough so that averages of properties are independent of the sample size and small enough that partial derivatives at the macroscopic level make sense. The governing equations at the macroscopic level are obtained by upscaling. These equations, supplemented by appropriate constitutive relationships, are discretized in space by means of the finite element method and in time by the finite difference method and solved numerically. The final model equations to be solved are the advection diffusion equation of the nutrient in module 1, the mass balance equations of the tumor cells, the host cells, the sum of the mass balance equations of the cells and the interstitial fluid, and the mass balance equation of the necrotic cells in module 2. Then we have the linear momentum balance equation of the mixture in module 3. The primary variables are the degrees of saturation of the tumor and host cells, the pressure of the interstitial fluid, the mass fraction of the nutrient, and the solid displacement. We solve three cases. The first deals with a multicellular tumor spheroid in a cell culture medium. The initial conditions consider a small tumor cell population of about 12 cells at the center, surrounded by a nutrient-carrying fluid. The boundary conditions respect the symmetry of the problem. Here we see the growth curve obtained in silico as a continuous line in black, and for comparison our data points taken from in vitro experiments by Kiniola and co-workers and Juhas and co-workers. The growth curve follows a Gumpertzian growth pattern. On the upper left we see the evolution of the viable rim and of the necrotic region. The plot below that shows oxygen concentration. On the right side is the distribution of the living tumor cells and of the necrotic cells after 360 hours. There is no sharp interface between the two cell types. The second case deals with two cell populations of an in vivo experiment. At the center of the model is a small number of tumor cells surrounded by healthy cells. The initial and boundary conditions are shown and the primary variables are listed. Here we see the influence of cell adhesion on the growth pattern. When the adhesion of the host cells and tumor cells is equal, the growing tumor cells displace the host cells as shown in the top figure. There is a net separation between the tumor cells in red and the host cells in orange. Necrotic cells shown in purple appear at the center. In the lower figure, the adhesion of the host cells is higher than that of the tumor cells. In this case, we see the tumor invading the host cell phase. The third case deals with a tumor growing near microvasculature. These vessels are at a distance of either 80 or 100 microns. A small tumor population, shown in red, develops initially at the left vessel. Nutrient source is blood in the vessels, and the nutrient is transported by the interstitial fluid. Again, the initial and boundary conditions are shown. The living tumor cells, 
the host cells and the oxygen mass fraction are shown for the case of an 80 micron distance from the blood vessels at 168 and 360 hours respectively. For the same case, we show the tumor growth for the first 20 days. It can be seen clearly that the tumor grows toward the second blood vessel, which is a new source of nutrient. At the same time, necrotic cells appear away from the nutrient source. In conclusion, this model is at an early stage of development. However, it already contains the interstitial fluid beyond the cell populations, and the coupled interactions between the different phases are fully taken into account. It is a truly multi-phase model, where other building blocks can be added, such as the vasculature, additional nutrients, temperature, and more. At this stage, we need more experimental data for further validation. Thank you for your attention.